Hello and welcome to the episode 340 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we'll see Brian Epstein trying again to secure the Beatles' signatures on a contract, a 1965 million seller, and the start of the recordings of Surgeon Peppers. Let's start the episode with the 6th of December 1961 meeting between the Beatles and Brian Epstein. After their first formal meeting three days earlier, see episode 337 for that, the parties had decided to meet again for their final decision on the possibility of Epstein becoming the official band manager, contract and all. Epstein had promised a lot, for a fee amounting to 25% of the band's gross income, he would have found bookings for them, all more exclusive and better paid than those the band currently had, with a minimum band wage of £15 per engagement, about £340 in 2020 money. He would have broken the Beatles outside the Liverpool area, he would have extricated the band from their Polydor recording deal and found a decent deal with a major British label. Reportedly, after an upbeat recap from Epstein, the band remained in an awkward silence until John Lennon exclaimed, Right then, Brian, manage us. Now, where's the contract? I'll sign it. Later in the day, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Bass on drums, performed an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, their 31st evening spot in their second home in town. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, were on the stage of the Club Django in Southport. While the venue was devoted to jazz, the management decided to book the band anyway, due to their increasing visibility in the region, a sign that the Beatles had started to draw a significant audience outside the Liverpool area. For the evening, the soon-to-be fabs were supported by the Diplomats, a local quartet. In 1965, the Beatles released their 10 TP on the UK market, the Beatles' million sellers. The EP, initially pressed with the Golden Discs title, included She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Can't Buy Me Love and I Feel Fine, and was meant to capture the money of those fans that hadn't bought the earlier singles for the 1965 Christmas market. And actually, I want to capture you, but not necessarily your money. Don't get me wrong, a donation is always welcomed, no matter the amount but there is a lot you can do to support my efforts to bring you an ever-increasing amount of music-related material for you to enjoy. Take a look at www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do. Even just a share on your socials or a positive review of this podcast really does make the difference. Thank you! 1966. The Beatles were at work in Abbey Road on this date, between 6.45 pm and 1.50 am, with two tasks at hand. First, the four recorded seasonal greetings for Pirate Radio's Radio Caroline and Radio London. After that, with the Strawberry Fields Forever rhythm track considered complete, the band decided to rehearse, clean up, and attempt to record Paul McCartney's When I'm 64. This wasn't a new tune. Tellingly, the Beatles had resorted playing it acoustically time and again whenever one of their amps would break down during the Coven Club days. It seemed a lifetime ago now, while in fact only three and a half years had passed. Two takes of the rhythm track were produced, with Paul on bass, Ringo on drums and electric guitar played either by George or John. Paul then overdubbed the piano part before the end of the session. This was the first track to be recorded for the Beatles' new album, which was still unnamed, but ended up to make history as Surgeon Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. 
Let's move forward three years, getting to the 6th of December 1969. Once again, for the fifth and last day, a BBC crew followed John Lennon and Yoko Ono around for the filming of the documentary The World of John and Yoko. The Lennons were shot playing fortunately, unfortunately, in their room at the Ball Hotel in Long Melford, laying in bed. In the evening, instead, Ringo Starr appeared with Peter Sellers and Spike Milligan on Frost on Sunday to promote The Magic Christian. The show was filmed in the Studio One of the Wembley Studios and later broadcast between 11.10 pm and midnight on that same night by London Weekend Television. Finally, also in the evening, George Harrison performed with the Lenny and Bonnie at the Empire Theatre in Liverpool, his first appearance there since the 5th of December 1965 concert with the Beatles, we featured in yesterday's episode. Why, this leaves me with nothing more to say. Join me tomorrow for more live gigs, including an interesting Quarrymen appearance. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.